Welcome to the ultimate one card combo guide with Rescue Ace abusing an exploit that allows us to play through infinite impermanence, Nibiru, and even evenly matched. I know this is controversial, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to not get exploited so it will not work against you. And Konami could more quickly probably fix something like this by giving it attention like this. And this guide is still good, even if you can't exploit, you still could play through impermanence, Nibiru, and evenly matched against players that are not properly taught off to hide their delays, but the exploit comes into play by still being able to read those cards with their toggle off. Let's begin. So first of all, what is the exploit? It all has to do, it's silly, I know this, it is the special summon animation when a monster is summoned from the extra deck. You want to turn this off. Whether you are on the receiving end or you are the giver, this will help you. If you have this off and your opponent has it on by default, if they are watching your special summon animation from the extra deck, only the extra deck, even if their toggle is off, it's going to reveal that they have Nibiru, Impermanence, Veil, or anything that's activatable, their field will light up. It will look something like this. Boom, field light up off of your special summon from the extra deck. Now, let me show you proof on how this works. So as you can see in the top right corner, the toggle is off. And I'm about to summon a Link Karibo here. So Link Karibo, come forth and summon. The toggle is off, all right? So their field should not light up, but we're gonna activate the Poplar very quickly, and then their field's gonna light up just like that. Now we see their field lighting up even though their toggle is off. Now get ready for the best Rescue Ace combo exclusive to Master Duel because we are using and abusing the opponent's field lighting up. What if you cannot exploit anymore and Konami fixes this or your opponent has it turned off? Well, they still have to play properly and most players do not. They usually are gonna have their toggle on or auto, but not off because they wanna be able to use their impermanence and not miss out on using it. Now we are gonna change our plays based off the opponent's field lighting up and we're gonna go step by step the three different main plays on what to do. So we're gonna be activating our bonfire, make sure our toggles on on or auto for the poplar being added so it can activate in the hand, otherwise it will not. Activate poplar, come forth and summon, and then poplar is gonna be activating. Now this is when their field would light up if their toggle is on on or auto. If it's on off, the field will not light up and you will not see in permanence, but we have the trick to see it anyway, if they don't know. So we're going to now be linking this off into Link Rebo. Now, part of this trick for this specific scenario, you have to click very quickly in this area in order to get through the animation quicker than they finish watching your animation. I know this is no longer a turn-based game anymore, but you gotta do it like this. So get ready, pick the extra monster zone, then get clicking, right here. Click, 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 yes, click, 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 boom. This is when, right now, before you even choose the zone, their field's gonna light up even with their toggle off if they have an impermanence or veiler. This will definitively tell you right here that they have something activatable. Now, if they are a Labyrinth player and they're very, very smart, which you could do this if you're a Labyrinth player, you could hold your furniture cards for instances like this. You could fake an impermanence, fake a veiler. So you're also gonna have to take that into account if your opponent is potentially faking a delay, which I believe Labyrinth is pretty much the only viable deck right now that could actually fake out with an impermanence or veiler. So it's gonna be up to you if you still wanna do this, but for the majority of the time, this will be optimal. So we're going to be then putting in our Poplar. We're gonna use our original Sinful. Let's turn off their field now. And then we're gonna send the Poplar to the graveyard. Now make sure to summon your Hydrant behind the extra monster zone of either side. It does not matter which side, but it's important to do so for the other parts of the combo. Now they're not gonna use their Impermanence or Veiler here if they know how to play properly against Rescue Ace, because everyone is told correctly to save your disruption for the Turbulence, unless they have more than one Veiler, more than one Impermanence, then it could be okay to negate. So we have Hydrant activating. We're going to be grabbing our Air Lifter. Air lift or anything level four or lower, summon it behind the extra monster zone so it gives you more options to make your plays, which you'll see why that matters later. Lifter, also not negating that, grabbing the alert. Alert, while we have a hydrant on the field, has the additional effect of searching our deck instead of just the graveyard. So this is where we're gonna add our turbulence. And this is when they know for sure that they have to hold their impermanent veiler for the turbulence. Now we're gonna play around that because we saw in the Link Rebo summon, their field lit up telling us that they have something to target and negate our turbulence with. So we're going to then go into a Hida. Hida is here. You can go into Pit Knight Earl if you have room in the extra deck. I do not have room for Earl. And then we're going to be going into our Promethean Princess. Let's get to it. Come forth and Shokan. 
And then Promethean Princess is going to be reborning the Hida from the graveyard. Doesn't matter where. And then we're going to whip out our Sprite Elf. It just like that, if they have Imperm or Veiler, they could only use it on the Elf and not the Turbulence. Because if you summon the Turbulence to where the Elf is pointing to, it is not targetable. It is untargetable completely. So just like that, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, now I could use my Imperm or Veiler. And they can, but only on the Elf. So you activate Turbulence, they activate Imperm or Veiler, it happens only on the Elf, the Turbulence goes through, and then you now win the duel as you set up in your back row, your four back row cards, which could be the Extinguish, the Contain, we could have the Emergency, at this point of this combo, it's not even a choice, it's just the only four cards you could set, and then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you're gonna win the duel because you resolved your Turbulence through a Veiler or Impermanence. Now I'm gonna show you how to play through Nibiru. Now, if we look at the official in-game analytic data, it shows that Nibiru's played at 57%. This was by March 29th. We should be getting a new update soon. And Impermanence is at 67%. Veiler is at 43%. So while the Nibiru is less likely to happen, we could check for Nibiru and then make our play differently accordingly to what's going on. Now, it's very important to note that if you ever see their field lighting up at the start of the duel before main phase one, it is simply their client trying to sync with yours. So even if they have nothing activatable, that is the one instance, and I promise you, it's the only one where their fields will light up if they have nothing activatable. Otherwise, with the exploit, if they're watching your summon animation, their fields will not light up unless they have something activatable. Let's now make this play. Nothing activatable happened. Let's do our normal play, and we're going to do the Nibiru check and then change our play accordingly. So we're going to add the Poplar. Poplar is going to be activating. Come forth and summon onto the fields. Activate the Poplar. This is where their field would light up for Impermanence or Veiler. Right now, this would be the first opportunity of lighting up, and then we would change the play into the Sprite Elf play. But because they have not lit up, we think that we are in the clear. So we want to counter summons here. We're on summon number two. And then you do want to spam click the Poplar quickly so that you get that final check of them having an Impermanence here and nothing lit up. You clicked this very quickly. You have the setting on correctly. Their field didn't light up. There is no impermanence unless they turned off the setting because they watched this video. We're now going to be using our original Sinful Spoils, summon from the deck the Hydrant, summon this behind an extra monster zone. Very important. And you're going to see why. So we are on summon number three. And then now we're going to be grabbing our Air Lifter, which will put us on summon number four. Let's put this also behind an extra monster zone. Activate. Grab an alert mate or summon. So we don't know if there's a Nibiru yet. We're going to now alert. Alert come to me, Turbulence. Now, if they have Nibiru in their hand, they know to wait to Nibiru your Turbulence, then they win. So what we have to do is we have to check for Nibiru, then play around Nibiru, and then once we played around Nibiru, we whip out our Turbulence, then win the duel. So instead of summoning Hida, because there was no field light up, so we're gonna summon Reprodocus. So let's whip out the Reprodocus, and we're gonna summon it on top of the Hydrant, and then this is it. Because it's an extra deck monster summon and you're using the summon animation turned off and they don't have that setting turned off, their field will light up even if the toggle is off. Now, again, hopefully Konami fixes this or your opponent watched this video and they know to not play uh, into this, but their field's lighting up on the fifth summon where otherwise it did not light up at all. Now, we summon Turbulence, we lose. We're going to get Nibiru. We do not want that to happen. Their field lit up, we gotta play around it. Now the Reprodocus, only to where it's pointing to, will change the type of the monster into a Cyburst. So we're gonna scroll on down here, Cyburst. Very good. And then we're gonna go into a Link Decoder. Get linking up. Very nice. And then we are going to be going into a Protect Code Talker, which will trigger the Link Decoder. So, you know, they're waiting on that Nibiru. They're waiting. So again, their field's gonna light up again here. Even if they're toggled off, they're gonna be like, what the heck, how are they seeing my Nibiru? Come forth and reborn this. And now, we're just gonna go into an Apollo USA. <laughs> just like that, got him. And then when you summon the Apollo USA, their field's gonna light up, and they're gonna be like, wow, uh, the opponent's really freaking smart. How did they know to play around Nibiru and not play around in permanence? It's because you watched this video. And then you know the rest. You could safely summon your Turbulence and we'll just do that real quick and activate and resolve it. Now I'm gonna show you the third and final play where you see no field light up the entire turn and you could just go wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, 
full combo the optimal way to do this turn one. So I did formulate this extra deck perfectly to play around this exploit. And uh, even when you're not exploiting, again, if they're not playing correctly, they're not toggling off, which most people are not at the lower ranks. Anything below Master, they're probably not toggling off anyway. So you don't even need the exploit. This is just the correct way to play in Master Duel. And then boom, you now win the duel. So let's show you the final way with their field never lining up. Now get ready for the final play, the full combo plus how to play out your disruptions. If the opponent does not have Impermanence or Nibiru, they may have a card like Evenly Matched or even Harpy Feather Duster. These are on the rise. These are great cards to counter Rescue Ace, but we have the counter for the counter while we also check for Nibiru and Impermanence. So let's start this off. Bonfire grabbing our Poplar, make sure our toggle is on Honor Auto when adding the Poplar. Come forth, summon itself onto the field, activate, grab ourselves our original Sinful. Basic plays here. We're then going to be Link Reboing this up, and then very quickly clicking into the middle. So the faster we activate the Poplar and target itself, that's when the opponent would be able to respond with an Impermanence. And then we'll see their delay, we'll see the field light up there. Now with the original Sinful, we're gonna send the Poplar. Grabbing the Hydrant, making sure to summon it behind an extra monster zone. There's two of them, both of them are fine. Now let's activate the Hydrant, come to us, our Air Lifter. We're gonna lift off right behind that Link Karibo, come forth, activate, come to us, alert. And with our alert, let's get alerting right now before we make our fifth summon, because we could then get nibiru for example. Grab Turbulence. Now, after four summons, let's commit to the fifth summon, and let's check for a Nibiru. Reprodocus, come forth and summon. Right in front of the Hydrant, very important. Have to do it there. If their field does not light up, you are in the clear, super clear. Now, let's banish for the Turbulence. We're gonna banish the Alert and the Air Lifter. Come forth, and don't summon it behind an extra monster zone, because we're going to want that for our Firewall Dragon later. We're going to be activating this right here, right now. Set the only four available cards that we could set from the deck, so there's no real choices. Set, set, set. And if you want, after setting them, you could just right-click to click Cancel. So you don't have to order them manually, and it will just shuffle them up. So right-click, does not matter. Now the Emergency is activatable, even though it's a quick-play spell because we control Hydrant. Only one of these back row cards could be activated right now. We're going to grab a Preventer, summon it, and then send it to the Grave. When Preventer is sent to the Grave through any wave whatsoever, it's going to activate to summon a Banished Rescue Ace. Come forth, we're going to be summoning our Lifter. Now, let's use the Reprodocus to turn the Hydrant into a Cybers. All the way down here. And let's start linking this off. Link Decoder, right under the Reprodocus. We do need a Link Arrow for this to be done. And then we're going to be making the Protect Code Talker. This could be summoned in either zone, not, does not matter. Now, let's trigger our Link Decoder. You don't have to summon it behind an extra monster zone. We could keep it open. Now, very important, to summon the Firewall Dragon, we're gonna use the Protect Code Talker as three materials, not the Turbulence, not the Link Decoder, we're gonna use the Air Lifter. And we want to have an open space behind it. Firewall Dragon, if it's co-linked, is gonna be able to return a card in our graveyard back to our hand. So we are gonna be banishing the Link Rebo and Reprodocus to summon our Protect Code Talker behind the Firewall Dragon, or you mess up. Now, the Firewall Dragon being co-linked is gonna be able to add the Preventer in the Graveyard back to the hand, which we have not summoned yet through its own effect, so we could summon it. First, we could make our Terror Hertz. One, two, three, three different Cybers. And then, let's whip out our Preventer. What do we want to banish from the Grave? The Emergency could recycle a trap, the Hydrant's gonna be reborn with the Rescue, so let's get rid of the Airlifter. Come forth and summon. And then if you want to optimally play around a Veiler, you could toggle on and then activate the Terahertz in the end phase. Otherwise, you could activate it right now. It does not send by a cost. So if it were to just get negated here, for some reason, they held on to all of their things here. So let's just end phase. We'll do it properly. End phase. Now they can't use Effect Veiler. Activate. Send the Deceive Worm to the graveyard. 
And now let's talk about all of our disruption. This is quite insane. If any of our cards leave the field by an opponent's card effect, what's gonna happen is the turbulence will trigger to pop a card on the field. It doesn't really count as disruption, but it's some extra protection. Preventer has the quick effect of flipping any monster the opponent controls face down. We then have contain, which can negate a monster and it can attack, and it cannot be used for an extra deck summon if we have a hydrant on the field. And then we have extinguish, which will target an effect monster, destroy it, and then if you have a hydrant on the field, it's going to also make it so monsters with that original name cannot activate. If it has an effect that activates in the graveyard or they have additional copies, the extinguish completely extinguishes. So what we could do is we could activate contain or extinguish, then chain link two, rescue our hydrant from the graveyard. Now we still have more disruption. We have disable worm which will negate a spell or trap card as long as we have a terahertz on the field if terahertz gets negated it does not matter it just has to be on the field we could use our disable worm i had someone use droplet on terahertz and then i was still able to negate their follow-up terahertz itself has some disruption in the form of aggregator we could send aggregator to the graveyard through the effect of terahertz during the opponent's turn to not only boost ourselves up to 8,000 attack it will also activate to then negate any card on the field until the end of the turn so let's say they were to activate a bonfire or snake eye ash and when it adds poplar poplar activates in the hand to special summon well we know it has a trigger effect we know that they are the turn player so what's going to happen is turn player optional trigger will be chain link one where our non-turn player optional trigger which would be the aggregator would be chain link two being the higher chain link versus the chain link one poplar we then get to negate it so on the activation of poplar in the hand before it special summons that is when we would activate the terahertz to send the aggregator to then negate the poplar and this will work with any effect that's about to special summon a monster that you think may have a trigger. So they could use Ash to summon a monster from the deck. Maybe they want to summon an Oak. In response to the Ash activation and summon from the deck, you then tear Hurts, send the Aggregator, negate whatever they summon, even if it has a trigger effect. Otherwise, if they activate something in the field and then you're chain link two trying to negate it, not going to work. All right, so understand that. Also, the tear Hurts states that within the battle phase, all of your opponent's monsters are negated. So let's see what the opponent does and let's get disrupted. All right, all right. Turbulence protection, Harpy Feather Duster. As you can see, we'd lose out on so much back row, but this is why Desave Worm is great. This is why I want to do the Terahertz combo play to stop that Harpy Feather Duster. This was definitely not scripted. Negate the Harpy Feather Duster. Now, we still have more. We have Aggregator Negate, Flip Down. We have Pop, we have Negate. We have a Mo Yi. So we're gonna contain that Mo Yi, negating it, and it's not gonna be able to be used for the extra deck if we chain link two, or I should say chain link three, our rescue to reborn our hydrant to give the contain that additional effect. Now, hydrant's tiny but that's okay. It cannot be targeted by attacks nor card effects while it's on the field alongside another rescue ace. So fully contained, fully negated, can't attack, can't be used for the extra deck, and we still have more disruption. Now, <laughs> the mad lad's gonna be summoning, oh my gosh, an alternative white dragon. This could activate to pop a card in the field. Now, anything it pops, if it's not the turbulence, turbulence will then trigger, get popping. So what we could do is we could, let's say, let's use the preventer. Yes, preventer. Flip it face down. So it does not activate, does not pop us, and very well done. Oh, what is that, mage power? Okay, that's fine. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, sure. Oh my gosh, Magician Soul is activating to summon from the deck. What is this? A Dark Magician Girl. Okay, I think we're good for now, I, I think, hopefully. Okay, we got a mage power, but boost. Okay, that Dark Magician Girl is now at 4,000 attack. Can you freaking believe that? Well, we're gonna extinguish her. She's attacking. We're gonna protect our turbulence with extinguish. Extinguish the fool. Just like that, bam, off the field. And sadly, we didn't even get to use our aggregator because uh, I ran out of ideas. And uh, end the turn, but just to show you, we could then send aggregator, negate a card in the field, and we're actually gonna have to negate our own card because there's nothing negatable on their side of the field. So hydrant, you're negated, sorry. Now. And then uh, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Easy win. So we can toggle this off. The Hydrant could grab from the deck an Airlifter. Because you may be thinking, oh no, your deck's out of juice. Rescue Ace actually does not run out of juice. All the spell and trap cards in the graveyard are going to be reusable. So we have Airlifter to grab the field spell. 
Now, with the field spell, we could return the cards in the graveyard and banishment back on the deck to then reset with the turbulence. But hold up, before you do that, there's a trick. The trick is you could use emergency to recycle one of the traps in the graveyard, and then you could use that trap more than once per turn if you'd like. So we have extinguish. So we could, so let's say we already have the trap set for a turn. We then activate it, then we reset it right now. We could then activate it again. So it's a good way to double extinguish, but the hydrant's only gonna allow one newly set card to be activatable just once. So we can set this, we can activate it, wipe out that Moe, destroy it, then we could reset it from the deck by returning it back in the deck. So it's a cool little extra combo there. We can, uh, there you go, get all four unique spell and traps back into the deck and then Turbulence gets set in and we are good. So there you go, set them all up from the deck, extinguishes back, but I mean, this does not really matter because you're very likely going to win the duel right here, right now. And for my build, I'll show you how you should be building this. I am, I do have room for Celine Navida and Axis Code Talker. So generally, if we didn't have the Tempest here, we would then be summoning a Hida. So I'm just gonna speed on through this, even though we don't have a banished card. I'm not gonna do this optimally, all right? Hida would be able to summon a Fire Monster from the opponent's graveyard. And, oh wait, I did have a banished monster? Oh yeah, we had the Airlifter, nice, cool. And then the Airlifter summoning a monster from the opponent's graveyard, which would be something like an Ash Blossom, we could then go into Selene. Now Selene has to be summoned in the extra monster zone, similarly to the Hida. And then it could reborn a Diablo Star. With Diablo Star in your deck, you're gonna very likely have her in your hand or in the graveyard or an Effect Veiler. So if you have Effect Veiler, you then reborn it and then with that, you could then go right into an Axis Code Talker. So that's how with the Hida, you could potentially go straight into an Axis Code Talker with just two monsters. Two monsters, Axis Code Talker, if they have a fire in the grave and you have a Spellcaster Reborn. So there you go, a boosted, wipe it out, and then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Lethal damage, and we good. So this is an attack position, obviously. What else do we have activatable? This could search our deck for a Hydrant or a Poplar. Grabbing the Poplar could be good for additional summoning, additional linking. So we'll grab the Poplar, Poplar will trigger, special summon. And what's great about the field spell is it allows you to also additionally summon. So we get normal summon impulse. And then if we had another monster normal summon, well, we could uh, normal summon. Well, we already used up our normal summon, plus that was our additional summon. So there you go. We du double normal summoned, special summon Poplar. We could further link into some more plays here if we wanted to get wild, like, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Promethean Princess. And then we're playing into a Nibiru right now, but that's okay. Not really, if we got Nibiru. And then, uh, no, we don't want you, unless you want to equip a Preventer, then send it to the graveyard. We could reborn the Turbulence. Oh my gosh. And this is the power of Rescue Ace, especially abusing the exploit, which you don't have to exploit. You can just play normally. So if you don't want to use and abuse that, just play normally. If they are not toggling off correctly, which most people are not going to, you're gonna see the impermanence, you're gonna see the Veiler, you're gonna see the Nibiru, and you're gonna make this perfect play with perfect disruption. Now, this is the extra deck and main deck. Yes, the main deck is missing cards, but I'll explain that in a second. For the extra deck, what is optional here? I believe what is optional is the Selene, the Axis Code Talker, and the Amblo Whale. Now, for the main deck, this is what I believe your main deck should at minimum look like for Rescue Ace. And you can play the deck more than 40 cards. So if you want ideas on how to fill out the rest of your deck here, we're gonna look at masterdollmeta.com, clicking on the tier list, we could see that Rescue Ace is already here. Otherwise, you could search a Rescue Ace card or just search for the deck type here, and then you can click on it here or click on it there. On average, the Master 1 deck lists are at 43 cards. I think the example deck I'll show you right here is an actual 50 card deck. Looking just like that, this is how you could could play the deck if you want. If you want to play up to 50, I prefer closer to 40, but that is going to be your choice. And that is it for the video. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you very much. And we're going to be having a massive, huge leak for the May pack. $1,000 tournament qualifier. I'll see you there. Get ready for it. Thank you very much. We are out.